What if a random idea could become a viral video with just one click? Today, we're going to build the app with .NET MAUI that does exactly that, fully integrated end-to-end -end with Sora. You write your idea, activate the AI enhancement, and the app transforms it into a cinematic prompt, feeling tension, defined style, and striking visual details. Then, we break it down into smart scenes like introduction, development, closing, and call to action so Sora knows exactly what to tell and how to tell it. Adjust the essential video settings, format, duration, and orientation without any hassle. You decide the outcome, the app handles the rest. When you generate, the app sends everything to Sora waits for the render, and brings you the ready-to-play video without leaving your workflow. Ready to go from I have an idea to I have a video? Let's get started. Let's begin this video where I'll show you how this application works, the one that allows you to create viral videos using the Sora model for video generation. Also, leveraging an LLM in case you want to enhance an initial prompt. So, here we have the main screen. And something I really like about .NET MAUI is that we can create the app using XAML code, using view models, and so on. And we can deploy it to Android, iOS, Windows, Apple, etc. So, in this case study, in this exercise, I'm using Windows or a Windows project for deployment. You can see that we have on the side panel a drop down menu where we have the settings section and the video creation section. And I want to start by showing you how the settings part works. I'm not going to go into too much detail. I'll give you an overview so you don't get too bored. This page basically allows us to enter information about the LLM service, which is an Azure OpenAI service. Here, we need to enter the URL, the API key, the deployment name, and also information about the Sora service so that this application works correctly. Something you should know is that you could swap these models in case you wanted to. You could change the video model here if you need to, or you could change the AI model provider so it's the one that improves the user's prompt. This window, what I want you to notice is that it works basically through the use of preferences, the preferences class. And this allows us to load data in case the user has already entered the information previously, their keys for connecting to the service, and also for saving the configuration settings. Once again, we use preferences.default.set to assign the user's keys and have them stored securely on the same device. Once we've seen this screen, I'm going to go to the main screen. And here we can enter an idea into these text box right here. So here we have the box to enter a prompt, which is basically going to be the video that we will generate. Something that is very common is that when we enter prompts for image generation, video generation, etc., we usually use very simple prompts that don't really describe what the user wants. Maybe because, for example, we don't add things like camera movements, or we don't specify the type of video or image we want to generate, and so on. To address this issue, I added an option that allows you to improve the initial prompt. And here we have a checkbox that, if enabled, will let us enhance the initial prompt using artificial intelligence. And we can see this quickly if we go back to the code. Here we have a view model that is bound to this page called at video idea page. Here it's called the view model, video display view model. And basically in this line, we're indicating that if the user wants to enhance the video with AI, we simply use the service or the method called enhance prompt async, along with the original idea of the video. Within the chat service class, which is a service we've added here in the services folder, we have a method that allows us to improve this prompt. You can change this prompt if you want or need to, basically to adapt it to your preferences. 
In my case, I created the prompt we see here. We defined the original idea and explained how the resulting prompt should be so the user doesn't have to input so much information. The AI model itself will generate this improved prompt. Once this prompt is created, we can also see that the application has a video configuration section. This section basically lets us configure the output of the video, the resolution, duration, orientation, since Sora supports different output formats. Every provider or video generation AI model has its own parameters, but in this case, this is adapted for Sora videos. Basically, what we do in the app in the same view model is once the prompt is improved, we gather all the parameters obtained from the graphical interface to create a navigation parameter and send this information from the start page to a second page, which will let us create an even more enhanced prompt. So we do this by navigating to video prompts and passing these navigation parameters. Now let's quickly take a look at this page called video prompts page, which basically is linked. I'm going to show you in the application. I will click the enhance and generate button. This starts the process of enhancing the prompt I mentioned earlier. So you can see that we have a prompt that has been generated here. You can see that we also have a set of sub prompts that were generated based on the initial prompt. Where does this happen? Well, it happened on this page called video prompts page. The purpose of this prompt is basically to take the initial prompt and adjust it with different characteristics we want for the video. How do we want the video to be? Do we want it to be fun? Do we want it to be exciting? And so on. We are doing this through a method called generate video prompt async, which I will show you where we call it. It is being called from this functionality called generate prompts from AI, which executes immediately when the page loads. Basically, this allows us to generate a series of prompts we saw in the application. One, two, three, four, as we see here. This prompt or method is right here. It contains within it another, even more complex prompt, which basically indicates the idea of the original video, whether this prompt is enhanced, and we are also defining a set, in this case for prompt formats, or four prompts we want to generate, and what each of these prompts should contain. So, the idea here is that you can modify this if you wish. If, for example, you don't want a call to action, but instead want an ending in a different format, maybe a closing screen or perhaps a screen that gradually fades out. You can specify this here. I have included this for demonstration purposes, but you can set it up however you like. What is important here is to specify the title and the content so that each of these prompts follows this format. And why is this? Well, because once a response has been returned, a method called parse video prompts is invoked, which allows us to extract the information from that mega prompt, or rather, from the output of the previous prompt, and each of the sections is obtained to fill each part of this list in the app. That's how it works. As I mentioned earlier, you could modify this as you wish which would then generate a set of sub-prompts that would be joined to the main prompt. You can see the main prompt has been greatly improved. This has been significantly enhanced compared to the initial prompt we previously had. Another feature we have as part of this screen is that we could directly edit each of the prompts in case we want to do so. We can also regenerate any of the prompts or delete them if we are not satisfied with any of them. Once this series has been generated, this list of prompts, the next step is to proceed with the creation of the video. For this, we're using a method here called generate video. This is basically a command that's linked to the graphical interface because it's executed thanks to the service called Sora. 
here we have a class called Sora service. And this service allows us to generate a video based on the properties obtained on the first page, which refers to the resolution, duration of the video, and so on. What's interesting here is that this method, which allows us to generate the video, makes use of the service. I'll show you a little further down what it does. We have a series of steps. First, it has to generate a job that will give us an initial response with the video ID we will obtain once it's completed. And why does this happen? Well, unlike, for example, a text-to-speech service, which allows us to get an audio file fairly quickly, in the case of video generation, this can take quite a long time. So what usually happens in these services is that a job is started. And while that job is being processed, we can periodically check the final status of that job that was started to see if the video has been completed or is still processing. So the first step is to start that job and return the job ID, just as we see here. As a second step, we basically do the work of checking the status of the video. And you can see that here we're calling a method called all job status async, which is simply performing a do while loop. And this do while loop is invoking the service URL that will allow us to know the video's status. So you can see here that we retrieve the status, and as long as this status is not succeeded or failed or even cancelled, it means the video is still being generated. Only when we get the status of succeeded do we really know that the video was successfully generated and we can access the URL. How do we do this? Well, once this method, poll job status async, finishes, we already have a generated video. So we move on to the third step, which now allows us to download the generated video. Here, we just invoke another endpoint that will provide the services URL. You can see the URL. And basically, by using an HTTP client, the video download is performed and the file is stored locally so we can watch it within the app. So this is what happens behind the scenes. If we click on the button that says generate video, you can see that this starts the video creation process. This is not visible in the graphical interface, but if we go to the console output, here you can see exactly this status says that are being returned by the service. You can see that, for example, we have a running status here. Before that, we had a previous status, which we probably have somewhere here, indicating that it was started. Okay, here you can see that, for example, the service was started with this ID that we see here. Then it began, um, or we had a status called pre-processing, and then an enqueued status indicating that the file is being queued. Then there is a status called running, and you can see that this running status remains for many iterations because this represents or indicates that the video is still being generated. Remember, we set the video duration to 10 seconds, and obviously, the longer the duration, the more time the service will take to create it. Here, we can already see a different status, which is processing. That means the rendering of the final video is already being processed, and it's almost ready. After a few seconds or minutes, we can see that the final job or the final status of the file is succeeded, which means that we can now download the video. In this particular case, here is the URL from where you can download this video, and internally, the download is performed to save it locally, according to the device you are using. Meanwhile, in the application, you can see that we already have a message indicating that we can view the video. And if we play the video, you can see that it looks quite realistic. We have the lion, we have the cat, and here it might be a good idea to remove that part of the prompt 
where we indicated we wanted to add some text, but basically the video quality is exceptional. Here we have some buttons to control the video player. By the way, on this page, in the video display page, we are using the .NET MAUI toolkit, which is community driven. Specifically, we are using a control called Media Element, which allows us to play videos. So we should really thank to the community, as they allow us to use these kinds of controls that are not officially available in the .NET MAUI framework itself, but are community projects that let us create this kind of project or application very easily. And best of all, they are cross-platform. With this, we finish our tour of this application that allows us to create viral videos. I hope you like the project. You can find the link as part of the video description and I'll see you in the next video.